My first question would be, Mr. President, uh, why did you launch an offensive on September 27 against Nagorno-Karabakh? What are the political objectives of this military attack? We did not launch a military attack on Nagorno-Karabakh on September 27th. It was Armenia who launched a military attack on Azerbaijan. And in the first hours of this military attack, we had victims among civilians and among our military servicemen. This was a third military provocation by Armenia against Azerbaijan within uh, three months. First, they attacked us on the state border between Armenia and Azerbaijan, far away from the Karabakh region. And by unanimous uh, opinion of international observers, it was Armenia who launched an attack on us. They wanted to occupy new territories. They wanted to take control over the strategic energy infrastructure, which is situated several kilometers from our state border with Armenia. As you probably know, Trans-Adriatic Pipeline is almost completed, and the Southern Gas Corridor Project is a project not only of energy security of Azerbaijan, but also of Europe. We think that one of the goals of Armenia was to take control of that pipeline and to blackmail us and maybe European consumers. They got a serious response. We pushed them back. But unfortunately, next month, August, they sent a sabotage group uh, which planned to commit acts of terror against Azerbaijanis. And the head of the sabotage group was detected by our military people, military servicemen, and he gives evidence. So it's a, a deliberate attempt to disrupt negotiations and to attack Azerbaijan. As far as the political goals of Armenia, which they pursued uh, launching this attack, was to uh, keep the status quo unchanged, to put the blame for this uh, escalation on us, to disrupt uh, negotiations uh, completely, and to involve third countries and to internationalize the conflict. We only gave them adequate response. As a result of that, we liberated and continue to liberate part of the internationally recognized territory of Azerbaijan. Uh, Azerbaijan have the ambition uh, to be a hub on conditions, not only on pipelines, on the uh, energy pipelines, but also on internet uh, fiber, uh, fiberglass cables. And I know that there is a uh, Azerbaijanese company called Nexol who wants to be the connection between Europe and Central Asia for internet. Do you think that uh, this project is still possible or not? to have a direct link through Azerbaijan uh, in the internet from Europe to uh, Central Asia. We, as you correctly mentioned, became already the regional hub for not only for energy, but also for transportation. We are now providing important transportation network for our partners across the Caspian, in the eastern part of the Caspian Sea and Europe. Uh, our investments in infrastructure resulted in creation of a very broad international cooperation format on transportation. Of course, uh, everything started with uh, energy infrastructure, oil and gas pipelines going through Azerbaijan already became a very important uh, source of energy security. And with respect to the oil pipeline, we already transit oil from uh, Central Asia through Azerbaijan to Europe. With respect to the internet connection, we invest largely into IT sector. Internet penetration in Azerbaijan is about 80%. We have 80% of population internet users. And we have uh, very hmm, developed uh, companies, private companies in this area. Therefore, the company which you mentioned, as far as I know, is a private company which has its own agenda and which invested in the region. 
And uh, I think their target is to implement commercially viable projects. And definitely, Azerbaijan, from a geographical point of view, and point of view of infrastructure today is very important regional actor. Uh, the, um, the, my question now is, can you describe us what is, uh, after more than uh, one month of war, uh, where is the front, how are the current uh, military operations? It is uh, less than one month, and as a result of a very successful counter-attack, Azerbaijan managed to liberate uh, part of the occupied territories, cities and villages, and every day we report about new cities and villages which have been liberated. Uh, it was not easy because uh, during the 30 years of occupation, Armenia built on the occupied territories uh, very solid uh, engineering constructions, so it was not easy to cross the line of contact, but we did it in different directions, in the north, in the south, and um, this uh, demonstrates the high level of capacity, capability of Azerbaijani army, and we defeat Armenia on the battlefield, and uh, they have to uh, run away from us. So uh, we already restored the uh, international border with Iran. Uh, more than 130 kilometers of this border was under occupation. So we uh, did a lot on the battlefield and this continues. And uh, Armenia two times violated the ceasefire. If they didn't violate the ceasefire, first uh, on the 10th of uh, October, uh, brutally violating it, uh, launching a ballistic missile on the sleeping city of Ganja, and second time on the 17th of October. Today the clashes would have stopped and political solution would have prevailed. That's our position. If they don't stop, we will continue to liberate our lands. Uh, they bombed the Ganja because there were some, uh, a, pe a couple of uh, Turkish F in, uh, fighters and one of this uh, Turkish F-16 fighter uh, shot down um, Armenian planes. So it's why they said they, uh, they bombed Ganja. This is fake news. I think that everybody now understands that that was a fake news by Armenia. Turkish F-16, uh, they are here because they were participating as a joint military training just before the uh, clashes started, and they are on the ground, they are not in the air. Armenian Su-25 hit the mountain, and uh, they tried to pretend as if uh, it was hit by the Turkish F-16. But that was in the first days of the conflict, it was in September. But they launched an attack on Ganja with ballistic missile on the 10th of October. Uh, first, second, uh, ballistic missiles launched was made from the territory of Armenia. And, uh, you know, big countries can monitor it clearly. They know from where it is launched. And what is the task for the missile? The task was to hit uh, civilians. They hit the area of Ganja where people live. So that was an act of international terror. That was uh, uh, another reflection of the uh, war crime policy of Armenia. These attacks on Ganja cannot be uh, justified, and they will be responsible for that. By accepting the intervention of Turkey and the arrival of Syrian fighters from Turkey, aren't you afraid of uh, turning a local conflict into a regional war? First of all, Turkey is not involved in the conflict at all. There is not a single evidence of Turkish involvement. From the first hours of Armenian attack on Azerbaijan, Turkey, Turkish president and other high-ranking officials expressed uh, and continue to express strong political support to Azerbaijan, support to the norms and principles of international law, 
support to the implementation of United Nations Security Council resolutions, which demand immediate and unconditional withdrawal of Armenian troops from our territories. So this is first. Second, there are no foreign fighters on Azerbaijani soil. Uh, this is another fake news. It was uh, spread uh, by some officials in some countries, but so far, it's more than, yeah, more than 20 days after the uh, clashes started, we didn't get any single evidence, neither from France nor from Russia, because French and the Russian officials made this statement and we asked for evidence. We asked for proofs, only words, no evidence, no proofs. And uh, another thing is that we don't need any foreigners to fight with us because we have an army, a regular army of 100,000 people. We have modern equipment. We have motivated people who were suffering from occupation for 30 years. We did not even uh, uh, announce a full mobilization. If we need additional uh, people on the ground, we will recruit more. Therefore, this is another attempt to present Azerbaijan as an aggressor, and also attempt by Armenia to diminish the capacity of Azerbaijani army, which is beating them on the ground. Um, do you, uh, Mr. President, um, you said you have, uh, you have very modern equipment, it is true. You have uh, all kinds of drones, some coming from, from um, uh, Turkey, but also uh, efficient kamikaze drones coming from Israel, Arab. So, so is, the, is the help of uh, Israeli military equipment very important for you? and allow you to make the military breakthrough? We buy military equipment from many countries, and our biggest uh, supplier of military equipment is not Turkey and uh, Israel, it is Russia. But unlike Armenia, from Russia we buy weapons, we pay them, Armenia gets weapons from Russia free of charge. We also buy weapons from Iran, from Ukraine, from Belarus, and of course we can afford to buy modern weapons which uh, today uh, help our army to restore our territorial integrity. And our territorial integrity uh, is being restored by us, but any country in our region is buying weapons. Uh, not uh, many countries in the world can supply themselves 100% with military equipment. So it's nothing uh, strange about that. And of course, uh, we pay for the weapons, we buy good ones, and of course, they help us on the ground. But liberation of territories is not by drones. Liberation of territories is by soldiers, by people who are there on the ground are doing their job. Uh, Iran has complained that um, uh, fighting, doing a military operation too close to the border, did you? Did you settle this dispute with Iran? Did you talk to the Iranian leaders? Yes, uh, we did. And as far as I know, Iranian leaders also talked to uh, Armenian side because uh, the clashes were taking place just uh, by the river Aras, close to the border with Iran, and by accident, some of the weapons crossed the border. But today, uh, we announced that we cleaned uh, completely Azerbaijani-Iranian border from Armenian occupants. Uh, therefore, no more clashes take place there, and there'll be no more inconvenience for our brothers across the river uh, of Aras in Iran. What is the best mediator, possible mediator, to, uh, to bring a, a, a halt to this war? Is it Russia? Is it, um, is it the best medi possible mediator, Russia? We have three mediators. Uh, they have a mandate from OSC, Russia, France, and United States. And for 28 years, they are uh, trying to mediate and trying to help parties to find a solution without any success. 
These three countries at the same time are members of UN Security Council, permanent members. And these three countries adopted those resolutions which I referred to, which demand withdrawal of Armenian troops. But unfortunately, they did not put enough uh, international pressure on Armenia to liberate the occupied territories and to comply with United Nations Security Council resolutions. Therefore, after Armenian military attack, we had to defend ourselves and had to restore justice by force, what we are successfully doing. And uh, among these three mediators, each of them is important. And uh, I observe and I see and I know that on the issue of Nagorno-Karabakh, they have a very rare, very rare unanimous approach. It's probably the only issue where their interests coincide. Uh, when, um, what kind of land you want to take back and then be ready to stop this war, Mr. President? We are ready to stop today. I was telling that since uh, 10th of October, when uh, in Moscow both sides agreed uh, about ceasefire. And I said, uh, the sooner the military part of the uh, solution of the problem is over, the better. We want to move on negotiation table. But unfortunately, Armenia brutally violated ceasefire and launched an attack on Genja. And on the 17th of October, they violated ceasefire two minutes after ceasefire was uh, efficient. Uh, therefore, if they stop today, we will stop, and then the rest will be done by uh, diplomats. If they don't stop, we will go until the end to liberate all the occupied territories. What is, uh, so, so this is your plan, uh, this is the Azerbaijan plan to get out of the conflict? Yes, if they stop now and uh, behave in a constructive way, if they um, publicly commit to the basic principles elaborated by France, Russia, and United States, which Azerbaijan is committed to, then of course everything will stop and we will go back on negotiation table. And by the way, I am in this process for 17 years. I worked with two previous Armenian presidents and we made uh, not a big progress, but we made progress. We were meeting regularly, there have been regular meetings in Moscow, in uh, Paris, in Washington. But after Pashinyan came to power, he actually did everything in order to destroy negotiation process, not only by his statements, but by his military provocations. And since he came to power for already two years, maybe more, there is no process. Therefore, uh, I think the political settlement is possible, but Armenian government should understand that they're not now in a position to dictate because status quo no more exists, line of contact no more exists. We created a new reality on the ground and they have to uh, you know, take that into account. Uh, what is your vision for the future of Karabakh? I expressed it many times publicly, and I can tell you now. Also, I delivered certain messages through mediators, through Minsk Group co-chairs, to previous Armenian government, how we see the future. We see uh, Karabakh as a prosperous, safe, secure area of Azerbaijan where people live in peace and dignity, where Azerbaijani and Armenian community live side by side. Uh, the area which uh, we plan to develop, as we did in all other parts of Azerbaijan, I can tell you that we have very substantial economic uh, achievements. We have very low level of poverty. It's about 5%. In Armenia, it's close to 50% also very low level of unemployment. Before the pandemic, it was around 5%, now it's 7 But in comparison with Nagorno-Karabakh, which is uh, endemic, it's day and night. So we can provide much better life for uh, Armenians who live there, for Azerbaijanis who will return there. And uh, I'm sure that the two uh, uh, nations, uh, two peoples, they will reconcile 
because uh, in 21st century, it's not possible to isolate yourself, to commit ethnic cleansing, and to uh, try to transform de facto situation into secession. It is not possible. No one recognized Nagorno-Karabakh so far, including Armenia itself, and I'm sure no one will recognize it. Therefore, the best way for the future of Karabakh, not only Nagorno-Karabakh, but all the Karabakh, it's a big region of Azerbaijan, is to live in peace, in uh, uh, harmony, and to, uh, to try to become uh, good neighbors again, Armenians and Azerbaijanis. This is my plan. But how that in the beginning of the 90s, there was an anti-Armenian pogrom in Baku. It, uh, it, it's why Armenians do not trust, say they can't leave. They are afraid for their lives to live in uh, Azerbaijan territory. Conflict started uh, after uh, separatists in Nagorno-Karabakh, sponsored by nationalists in Armenia, uh, launched a secession plan to secede from uh, Azerbaijan. And they could not do it from legal point of view at the time of the Soviet Union. So they started pogroms in the territory of Nagorno-Karabakh and in the territory of Armenia. The first victims of uh, the war and clashes were Azerbaijanis from Nagorno-Karabakh. There have been uh, 40,000 Azerbaijanis who lived in Nagorno-Karabakh, primarily in Shusha and also in the capital, Hankandi, who were ethnically cleansed completely. Then 250,000 Azerbaijanis who lived in Armenia. Many of them were killed and all of them were ethnically cleansed, expelled. Those clashes were taking place everywhere, in Yerevan, in uh, other Armenian cities, in Nagorno-Karabakh, Therefore, uh, this should not be a kind of a reason why people cannot uh, reconcile. In Europe, how many times uh, France and Germany had wars? How many times, uh, you know, other uh, countries had wars? We had Second World War, which costed lives of uh, 30 or 40 million people. But after 20 years, after uh, Western Germany and Soviet Union became on good terms, and now nobody remembers that. This is how it should happen in the civilized world. The problem is that in Armenia, they cultivate hatred. They cultivate historical hatred against Turkey, against Azerbaijan. And the former president of Armenia, Kacharyan, publicly said that Azerbaijanis and Armenians cannot live together. But look how they live together, for instance, in Georgia. In some Georgian uh, villages, Azerbaijanis and Armenians live side by side. In Russia, it is the same. In Azerbaijan, we have thousands of uh, Armenians who live in our country. Why it's not possible in Nagorno-Karabakh? I think that the wounds of the war must be healed by political wisdom, by political will. And after this active uh, hot phase of the conflict stops, both sides need to invest largely in order to do everything to heal these wounds. Uh, aren't you afraid, Mr. Pre this is my last question, afraid, Mr. President, that after a while, uh, President Erdogan of Turkey will stop uh, his support uh, uh, and his policy in uh, Caucasus to uh, focus on northern uh, Cyprus. Turkey and Azerbaijan are brotherly countries, and uh, our brotherhood has been tested in many uh, circumstances. And in this particular case, Turkish president uh, expressed publicly a strong support to Azerbaijan. He said that Azerbaijan is not alone, Turkey is side by side. So this is a very strong uh, political support and we are very grateful for that. Uh, this is first thing. Second, what I want to say is that what we're doing on the battlefield, we do ourselves. Yes, with modern weapons, with modern equipment, but it is Azerbaijani soldiers and officers who liberate our motherland. Our relations with Turkey have great uh, history, but even brighter future. And uh, Turkey as a country, which is the only country in the world 
which has a border with all the three republics or countries of Southern Caucasus, Azerbaijan, Georgia, and Armenia, has, I think, a legitimate right to be involved in this process. Because as a neighbor, as a country which uh, can provide and provide stability, predictability uh, for the region, and as a country which agenda is very clear, they defend international law. International law says that our territories are under occupation. So what wrong do they do? They just demand international law to be implied. Armenia doesn't want to do it. They want to keep our lands for more than 30 years under occupation by illegal settlement of Armenians from Lebanon, by uh, military operations against Azerbaijanis, by destroying our historical and religious heritage. Turkish role is very positive. And after uh, the war with Armenia stops and political settlement is in force, I'm sure the role of Turkey will be very important and very positive. So you don't think that Turkey has got a plan to erase Armenia in order to have a direct connection with the Turkish people of Central Asia? No, this is again Armenian phobias, you know, and Armenian uh, provocations. Uh, in the peaceful plan which we, I was discussing with uh, leaders of Armenia before Pashinyan came to power, there was a clear reference to communications. After the peace agreement is signed, all communications are opening, including communication between Nakhchivan, Autonomous Republic of Azerbaijan, and the mainland of Azerbaijan. And thus, Turkey and Azerbaijan and Central Asia will have you know, land connection. Today, we don't have it. But Turkey still has connections through Azerbaijan. We built a couple of years ago, Bakut Bilisi Cars Railroad. So Turkish goods through Georgia, Azerbaijan, Caspian, go to Central Asia and backwards. So the road from Turkey, Nakhchivan, uh, Armenia, Azerbaijan is shorter. So it's not the fact that Turkey doesn't have this connection. And as you say, uh, somebody thinks that they want to erase Armenia to have it. They have it. We have it. We will have another one. But uh, it is again part of the peace plan. All communications will be opened. And I think that Armenian government should not uh, try to frighten its population with Turkey and should stop this hatred towards Turkish and Azerbaijani people. How is your relationship, current relationship with Georgia, who is another Christian nation in the Caucasus uh, region? Yeah, with Georgia, our relations are excellent. We call each other strategic partners. Azerbaijan is the uh, first or second largest investor in Georgia and first or second uh, largest taxpayer. Uh, I'm saying first and second because one year it's Turkey, another year it's Azerbaijan. And we have a trilateral format of cooperation between Turkey, Georgia, and Azerbaijan. We had presidential summits, ministerial meetings, including defense ministers, foreign ministers, economic ministers. We have all our major transportation and energy communication going through Georgia. We have a big Azerbaijani community in Georgia, uh, close to 300,000 people. Therefore, relations are excellent, and I think could be a good example, uh, like our relations with Turkey, our relations with Georgia. They are good examples of uh, good neighborhood. And by the way, the fact that Georgia is Christian, Azerbaijan is Muslim, doesn't make any difference. We don't look at this region from this point of view. You don't take uh, religion into account when you do politics? No, religion is separated from the state according to our constitution. Azerbaijan is a secular country. We respect our religion. We respect religions of all other nationalities who live in Azerbaijan. And I think the best indicator of uh, religious harmony in Azerbaijan could be the words of His Holiness, uh, head of uh, Roman Catholic Church, Pope Francis. When he was in Baku several years ago, he made a public statement highly praising Azerbaijan's role in intercultural, interreligious dialogue. And um, 
all the representatives of uh, different religions in Azerbaijan live in peace and harmony, including Armenians. And in the center of Baku, there is an Armenian church which has been restored by us and protected by our government. But our mosques on the occupied territories have been destroyed. And Armenians, they keep pigs in our mosques. Just recent videos was uh, in internet in Zangilan region after liberation of one village. Uh, it was uh, uh, on internet how pigs, you know, walk in our mosque. So Azerbaijan is a tolerant and uh, secular country and will continue to be like that in the future. Thank you. It was a very good interview, Mr. President. Thank you.